Lin Koping, June 1946. The first Saab car is shown to the board. A handful of men borrowed from the aircraft factory have designed and built a family car for the Swedish market. It's an uncomplicated and sturdy vehicle that completely answers post-war requirements to travel from A to B cheaply and safely. The prototype is tested day and night on public roads and covers 50,000 kilometers. Nice, January 1988. The Saab 9000 CD is unveiled to the international motoring press. Customer expectations are far greater now, not just basic requirements such as economy, safety and quality, but also aspects such as comfort, performance and a feeling of luxury. There are also legal requirements which often vary from country to country. This is Saab's technical center in Trollhattan. Here we have the resources to design, test and develop cars so they'll meet today's requirements and the requirements that can be expected in the future. When we develop cars today, we center on the human body. We start from the hip joint, as it's in the same place on all human beings in relation to sitting surfaces. That there's sufficient space for driver and passengers can be quickly checked on the computer. Then we use packing studies to check there's space for all the larger components in the new car's proposed shape and size. Once the interior space requirements have been decided, the design department sketches proposals for the external appearance. The best designs are then made up as clay models. The coordinates are measured and fed into a computer-aided engineering or CAE system. The external design is used together with its member structure to conduct theoretical calculations of strength and deformation behavior in a crash. A theoretically calculated structure must, however, always be put through practical tests in verification trials. In the crash laboratory, we install measuring equipment and crash dummies in cars in order to obtain as much information as possible from each test. The speed is 50 kilometers an hour. The forces which have to be absorbed by the car's deformation zones are tremendous. At the moment of impact, a person who weighs 75 kilograms has kinetic energy equivalent to two tons. Information from the crash is fed into the CAE system and forms the basis for new calculations in the computer. Product development involves closely integrated teamwork between designers, various specialists, test engineers and production technicians. And this applies to every single component in a car. A wishbone is a very central component in a car's performance and operation. The wishbone transfers engine forces, braking forces, steering forces and road forces. It must be carefully calculated in order to meet all requirements. At the same time, its weight is kept as low as possible. Using CAE techniques, the stress in the material is calculated under different forces. The rear fulcrum pin, which acts as a pivot point against the body, is of special interest. In the fatigue laboratory, prototypes are exposed to fatigue testing in rigs. Here, any weak spots are revealed brutally, and often with the help of extreme loads, in order to shorten the process.
Broken prototypes are analysed by material specialists in order to eliminate manufacturing faults or unsatisfactory choice of materials for series production. In the materials laboratory, materials and fracture surfaces are closely analysed in a scanning electron microscope. This instrument provides the material specialists with an extremely good picture of the properties and quality of the materials. Magnification is up to 100,000 times. Impurities down to a few micrometers in size can be directly analyzed and defined using the analysis equipment connected to the microscope. We also test complete cars in the fatigue laboratory and a car's individual components, of course. We can simulate the toughest road conditions imaginable in our hydropulse test rig. The hydraulics are controlled by signals recorded in test cars on special test tracks. Such as here on our vibration test track. As the wishbone transfers road noise, it's important to analyse noise bridges and response oscillation in order to insulate the noise at the source. In the sound laboratory, we measure noise levels and types so that we can deal with all the noise phenomena that can occur in a car. The Saab basic engine was developed together with the company's Scania division. The engine laboratory in Trollhattan adapts all auxiliary equipment to make the engine perform well in the car. To check components and processes inside the engine which are difficult to get at, we also use fiber optics. Here the inlet valve is being studied. It's also possible to take components apart and check them in a measuring microscope. For environmental reasons, the amounts of dangerous exhaust gas emitted by a car must be the smallest possible. Most countries have legislation on this, and it's Saab's goal to design cars with the cleanest possible exhaust. The composition of exhaust gases is analysed in the exhaust gas laboratory. Test cars are run on rollers in predetermined and standardised driving cycles. Realistic conditions are created in the laboratory by simulating various driving situations. We have access to advanced measuring equipment and computers to process all information. But it's not possible to simulate the driving feel, the feeling of comfort and road holding. That's why there's extensive testing on the test tracks and out on ordinary roads. On all kinds of roads, over the entire world, all year round, in all climate conditions. We also have our own synthetic sun.
speeds of up to 180 kilometers an hour can be simulated in the climate and wind tunnel. Here we can also create different temperatures, humidity and solar radiation to simulate all the environments to which a car can be exposed. Trollhattan, March 1989. The 1990s are already here. Old requirements are tightened up. Others are changed. New ones are initiated. Here, we have the resources to design, test and develop cars to meet the requirements of the future.